Well, looky here. Driving Ivan inside of Ideal Classic Cars. Just shot the Cars and Coffee outside, a car event. But now I'm gonna take you around inside of Ideal Classic Cars in Venice, Florida, and show you the amazing museum they have in here and all the cars. Let's get started. Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> Let me tell you a story about a man named Jed. Great song. <laughs> A lot of American muscle here. It's uh, very tight in here actually, but I think I can walk through and show you everything. <sighs> Chevrolet. Wow, it's tight, it's tight. I'll try to get through, show you everything. Ooh, this one's pretty cool. <sighs> very cool, it's a Barracuda I believe, Cuda. Let's see. Hemi Cuda. There's the Hemi. Please do not touch. Nice look at cars in here. Wow, look at this one. Holy, holy. <laughs> Seems to be a uh, C2 Corvette. Split window, the 63. But, uh, of course, it's a tribute. And it was probably done on a much more modern Corvette. Yeah, probably a C5 or something like that. But, uh, wow, that's pretty cool. I guess it's for sale. I like it. This one's cool. <laughs> I like it. Light blue. Metallic, same color as my Porsche 911. Actually. It is tight in here. But again, I'm going to just walk through and show you every car. Oldsmobile official pace car. How cool is that? Key's in it, but you're never going to get it out of here. So don't even think about it. <laughs> it is so tight in here. There's my first car right there. Not this one. But here. I have a 70 Chevelle convertible. This, of course, is an SS and a quick one. Mine was not quick. I'll tell you that. It was not quick at all. <laughs> Back here and show you these. Nova. Just making my way down here. That one's really nice, custom. Detroit 442, Oldsmobile 442. Yeah, that's the car that Blondie was singing about. Sure is, in case you're wondering. Absolutely. Detroit 442. Baby, baby, I can rock with you. If you like music, check out my music videos where I play all the instruments on songs like Hotel California, my original song, Free Your Mind, has a, a lot of my guitar and musical instrument collection in it, which is vast. <laughs> and a lot of my car collection. You can even see my C3 Corvette that I've since sold in that video. Dodge Challenger. I was looking at some of these uh, outside. The RT Challenger. Newer version. But uh, this is the classic purple. Wow. Beautiful colors here. Let me see if I can squeeze in. I want to show you these interiors here. This is very cool. See the similarities. Wow. Gorgeous. I mean, what a great color combination. Absolutely amazing. There's Chevelle SS here. Chevy Nova 66, and this one uh, looks to be a Grand National. 3.8 SFI Turbo. There you go, Grand National. Nice looking interior here, very custom. I mean, I say custom, but that was stock, but just a custom look, very cool. Uh, RT, my brother had a Plymouth Satellite, which was similar to this one in shape. RT Charger, very cool. Super Sport Chevelle. Just gonna walk you through each and every one of these. Quite cool. Yeah. Not sure what I'm looking at here. Maybe I should try to figure it out for you. What is it? What is it? Got a dune buggy there. Uh, Seta. BMW Seta there. I believe those were made at the BMW factory. 
in Germany. And uh, lots of cool stuff there. Yeah. Cool stuff everywhere. Mercedes McLaren here. Is that what that is? Yep. McLaren Mercedes. Fastest car I've seen in the museum so far, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> we have the uh, equivalent of uh, Steve McQueen here in a golf cart. Steve McQueen golf cart. McLaren SLR. See, cool. Ain't that cool. Look at this Mustang. Ooh. That was awesome. I wonder if this is a Myers Manx dune buggy. Can't tell. There's a closer look at the Assetta here. The monkey. You know, there was a monkey show back then. I don't know if you're familiar. It's called Lance Link, Secret Chimp. Lancelot Link, Secret Chimp. It was basically a 007 type show with monkeys in it. <laughs> Lance Link, Secret Chimp. It was a play on uh, uh, Get Smart. There you go, McLaren, Mercedes. That's the fastest car in here, I would suppose. In case you're wondering, I'll tell you if I see a quicker one. Mercury Cougar. Really nice. Very cool looking. Another uh, Challenger here, RT, with the purple and white. I would have one of these. They are great. Yeah, it looks to be a 355 Ferrari. 355 H gate or no H gate? Yes, the H gate shifter. I did drive one of these. Uh, the Ferrari H gate is uh, definitely a wonder of the world. It's a it's an automotive uh, piece of mechanical brilliance. Love the way the top goes here. If you had the top up, it would mimic the shape too as well. But the Ferrari H gate is amazing. Check out my car driving reviews of the 308 and the 550 Marinello. If you want to see what driving the H gate's like, uh, but uh, it's incredible. Let me tell you that. Also drove the Ferrari Roma, full driving review of that one. And I just toured the Ferrari factory recently. That video should be posted soon. It's not already up by the time you watch this. Uh, just posted Lamborghini factory, my travels in Europe. So Ferrari will be forthcoming. C2 Corvette, saw one of those outside. My friend has a very clean 1967 yellow. Uh, shout out to you, Bob. It's a great car. And uh, lots of Corvettes here. I had a C3, full driving review of that one. Drove the C7. Watch me lose control of that in the rain <laughs> while it was in weather mode, if you want to see my full driving review of that one. Ooh, mid 50s, uh, early, 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 early Corvette. Please do not touch. Automatic transmission. There's a manual. That's pretty cool. And look, we're going to get down here and see all this stuff too. Don't worry. It's all coming up. Look, it's a Batmobile. <laughs> Everybody's out here enjoying it today. Really nice. This is a Ferrari that you drive and it doesn't drive you. So this is why people want these uh, back in the day. Red. Very nice. All right. I like the wheels on this one. Fuel injection. I don't believe this is stock. Maybe it is. Looks like it's got some stuff going on, that's for sure. <laughs> Ideal classic cars here in Venice, California. I mean, Florida. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Venice Beach, uh, California is quite nice. Um, it's called such because of the canals, and that's the same down here, but um, Venice, Florida, I guess that's where it got its name, but Venice Beach, California, next to um, the uh, other beaches like uh, uh, Malibu, all those other places there. Santa Monica, just a beautiful stretch of beach there. And of course, Muscle Beach is over there too. I don't know if they have one of these down here, but they do have a uh, Lincoln Continental. 
limousine here. This is similar to the uh, famous blue uh, Kennedy car. I'm not sure what year this is. But that, that would have been a early 60s, of course, 63, 62, 63. This one uh, looks to be from the same era, maybe a little later, though. Not exactly sure. This is a uh, Factory 5 Cobra here. Yeah, Factory 5 Cobra replica. And uh, I have a full driving review of this one, so check that out elsewhere on YouTube if you want to see what it's like to drive one of these beasts. They are beasts, let me tell you. This thing, uh, hard to keep traction in these things. It's very quick. And uh, you, of course, want to stay away from these because they'll burn you <laughs> if you touch them accidentally. I also have an interview with uh, Pete Brock in front of the Cobra Daytona. Uh, and that's a very interesting piece of uh, automotive history with him talking about building it with Carol, Carol Shelby and the story uh, of how he came up with the idea and how it was received by the rest of the uh, Shelby uh, engineering team and racing team. Let's just say that um, they weren't really open to a new idea. <laughs> they didn't think it was an attractive car, but watch my interview with Pete Brock there in front of the uh, Cobra Daytona. Just search Drive and Ivan. Leave off the G, Pete Brock. Also, have you smashed that like button yet? I hope you've smashed that like button and subscribed. It really helps me out. Um, and uh, share my videos too. Just search any car and Drive and Ivan, but Drive and Ivan Cats is my YouTube channel same as uh my instagram and then on tiktok i'm the real driving ivan leaving off the g d-r-i-v-i-n i-v-a-n-k-a-t-z giving you lots of car shows lots of car reviews and car content and music content disc golf content i like to play disc golf might even look for a course here in venice later today once I'm done with all this car fun. Wow. I've always liked these Camaros and this one. It's kind of a deep blue with a blue interior. SS. These are so valuable now. So desirable. Back in the day, you know, they were kind of just used cars. When uh, my uh, Chevelle was purchased by a family member... Um, you know, it was just a used car. In fact, I think it was a, a car that had come in. We had a convertible top place, actually. Uh, upholsteries and convertible tops and car radios. And I believe someone brought it in and it needed a new top. And they gave him the price. And I think they said, hey, I could sell the car for that much money. And so I think they did. <laughs> and that's how I ended up with it eventually. But we had some cool convertibles. A lot of Cadillac Eldorados and Coupe de Vils in my family. And uh, like I said, my mom's Dodge Dart, GT convertible. Uh, always loved convertibles. Then both my brothers later had a Vega, Chevy Vega. It was kind of funny. Those are cool cars. I remember driving a Pinto back in the day. The business had a Pinto. And we had a diesel Jetta. It's how I got to drive a lot of cars. It's how I got to drive my first Ferrari. I was able to drive it around the block that would have been a ferrari 400 but you know that's that's what's great about cars and it's it's the stories about the cars really um the stories are what make the cars um memorable you know it's what we remember all these guys out there with their cars um you know they remember them from back in the day the guy with the porsche and uh yeah, he was even talking, the guy with the Porsche was talking about how he wanted a 67 Corvette, because that was the one, you know. So we remember what we had. That's the reason I bought my Corvette, my C3. It was a blue Corvette, because that was my first favorite car. Before, I liked Ferraris. There's, you saw the Austin Healey M100 outside. This is the Austin Healey 3000. Similar, later. Uh, bigger engines in these, and, you know, still that same great shape and design, but... Uh, that's what you had right there. They got a Di Tomaso Pantera. This, of course, is the Batmobile. Get on down here. <laughs> this looks to be uh, 
a kit build sort of thing. And it uh, looks like they did a good job. <laughs> I guess it's for sale. I don't know. GTO. Mach 1 Mustang, you know. I think they called it the, uh, well, it was a Boss Mustang. They had a Matchbox car that was very similar to this one. But that was the Boss Mustang, I believe. This one uh, looks similar. This is a little later. This is going to be a later 60s Mustang. You can tell the body shape's a little different. Appears to be slightly bigger. Um... Beautiful Corvette here, wow. Ooh. Love it. I don't know if I can walk you in there. Maybe I can squeeze in here. I don't know. I don't think they want you to, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> Very carefully. Very carefully. Got to show you the interior on this one. Look at that. Beauty. Whew. Manual transmission. Four speed and reverse. Not quite on the floor. It's not four on the floor. It's a little higher than that. I'll we'll show you this too since I'm here. There you go. Two American classics, the Corvette and the Mustang. I wouldn't mind this one. <laughs> this is a beauty. What a great color. Ooh. Yes, please. Nice looking wheels too. Sporty looking, quick. Porsche 356. Like uh, the top, I don't know about the top. Looks a little suspect the way it's down, but um, nonetheless, it's kind of a little flatter here, so it uh, it looks like a might be a beast. Carrera, notice that is from the Carrera Pan America race that they did back in the day. That's where Porsche came up with that. They had success in that race, and so they uh, named their models and the. Uh, 84 to 89 Porsche 911 after my 911 SC. Those are referred to as Carreras as well. And you can see Carrera on modern Porsches to this day. They're still calling them Carreras. Look at this thing. I believe this, uh, I don't know. Let me see. It is the Factory 5 GTM. So you saw that Factory 5 Cobra. This is the Factory 5 GTM, kind of a car they built to be a uh, I don't, I'll call it a 4GT competitive, basically a race car for the street. Um, super cool air, air performance. Um, nice looking car. Here we have a Viper. And this one, my personal favorite here. Very quick. This is an, I believe it's a, is it an Alpina or is it just a Z8? Maybe it's not an Alpina. It's not an Alpina. It would have had the wheels. And plus it's a manual. You could not get the Alpina in a manual. So this is actually a BMW Z8. And uh, manual transmission making it super rare. So there you go. Look at the headlight covers there. And uh, wow. Just really awesome. This would have been, of course, the... Uh, remake of BMW's 507 kind of like uh, Porsche did the Boxster for the 550 Spider, and this is kind of a recreation of the 507 in modern form. Elvis Presley had a 507 actually, it was white, and they found it and restored it, it's now worth probably a billion dollars, but uh, very cool. Even Elvis appreciated that shape. <laughs> I'm sure if you were alive today, he would have bought a BMW Z8 by now. I like the Alpinas though. Alpina modifies BMWs. In fact, they just were bought by BMW. They're going in-house now that kind of electric cars are coming into vogue and cars like my Alpina B7 are uh, going to be a thing of the past. So actual cars built by Alpina I think will be collectible eventually. This one's pretty cool. Resto modded uh, uh, Chevy. I don't know if it's the Nomad or the... I get confused with these Chevy station wagons. But uh, maybe the... I think there's a difference between the two and the four-door in the naming. But anyway, let me know what it is in the comments because I love it. I love wagons. I have a pink Citroen CX wagon. 57 Chevy Bel Air convertible. Another 57 right here with the wheel covers. What do you think? Also, let me know in the comments. Wheel covers 
or not wheel covers in your 57 Chevy. And what color would you have it in? I'll have mine in turquoise. <laughs> With turquoise and white interior, please. That's well, uh, that's the way I want mine. But uh, very cool. Uh, GMC pickup. This, speaking of Elvis cars, Elvis Presley had a Di Tommaso Pantera. And uh, this was a early 70s. Uh, later, he came out with a Mangusta. Di Tommaso owned Maserati at one point in the 70s. And uh, yes, Elvis Presley had one of these as well. Um, and so did uh, Tim Horton. If you watch, uh, I like to do car stories. And if you watch my Tim, just search Driving Ivan Tim Horton, and you'll hear about the fateful uh, story about his Pantera. It's not a good ending, let me just tell you. But uh, Tim Horton, basically the Dunkin' Donuts of Canada. They're up in Detroit, too. Check that out. Whole history of Tim Horton and his Di Tommaso Pantera and the business as well. But Elvis uh, was going to a movie one night, and it wouldn't start, and he was mad. So he asked his uh, date, the lady he dated after he uh, broke up with uh, Priscilla. They were getting a divorce. And she was in the car, and he asked her politely to get out, and then he proceeded to shoot it five times with his gun. And that car still has a bullet hole in the steering wheel and is owned by the Peterson Museum in Los Angeles. And that is a uh, yellow car. And you can see that in my Tim Horton video, too, that actual car. Put it in there. So there you go. Chevrolet. I love car stories. I like music stories, too just posted a performance of uh, what's it called um, the kinks come dancing with my old band new wave band and uh, tell the story of that song 428 look at that 440 a lot of beautiful old cars in here I'll tell you ideal classics Venice Florida what do you guys think I like it. I hope you like it too. Bronco. These are very hip vehicles nowadays. Limited edition, fifteen hundred. Good wrench service. Racing. Special Earnhardt Racing Edition. That's pretty cool. Maybe they use it as a crew car. It's signed too on the dash. On the glove box, I mean. It's pretty cool. Don't forget to smash that like button to subscribe. Search any car and drive in Ivan. There's my Maserati Spider. Full full uh, buyer's guide on those. And uh, here, I'll see if I can show you the back of my shirt too. There's my Austin Hewitt Sprite. Hope you could see it. This is cool. Let's go look at the signature on the glove box. I want to see that. I like to get guitars signed by people. Personally, had a guitar signed by many, many people actually. Uh, Rick Ocasek, the late great Rick Ocasek, guitar player in the Cars, and also the singer, songwriter. Uh, there you go. Dale Earnhardt. That's a rare signature, right? How cool is that? Very cool. I appreciate all cars, really. I like the foreign ones. I tend to get those for myself because I like sports cars but I appreciate all of these cars it's funny though my Corvette I had a 77 Corvette C3 blue <laughs> see if we could tell where these hard tops go I'll tell you this one is a Mercedes SL right here this one I'm not sure could that be a Corvette or something um, sidecar motorcycle here that's very cool this one is for the Ford Thunderbird. And that one, I'm not quite sure. Look at that beauty. GT500 now. If you look at some Jim Morrison videos back in the day, uh, he's driving one of these. He was given this car. His, blue, his was the reverse. It was blue and white instead of white and blue. It was blue with white stripes. And he was given one of these by his record company when the doors went platinum and sold a million copies. And he famously left that car all over the place, crashed it, and did things like that. But um, 
I have a story on Jim Morrison actually in Alexandria, Virginia, where he was from. And I've got a story on his world in Paris, including his grave and where he lived and where he liked to hang out coming up. Andy Warhol's house in uh, Pittsburgh, his house, his church, and his school. So check those videos out. Amazing condition. It says right on the uh, windshield there. I had three of these. I have one. I currently have a 74 SL. And I had a 75 SL and an 83. But watch the 75 video or any of those videos for a full history on these. They call them, the Germans call this Der Panzer wagon, which is a tank because they're built like a tank. You still see these on the road today in all sorts of places, including Florida. They're great classic cars to own because they're very comfortable. They're reliable if you treat them well. And uh, more comfortable to drive than something like this uh, Cobra here. This thing, as I said, watch my full driving review of this one. Just search driving Ivan in any car, but this one is uh, really, really difficult to drive. <laughs> it's got a lot of power. A lot of power. Aero SS. This Mercedes is... Wow. <laughs> if you could have any car to drive on a day like today in Florida, I think I might just pick this one. Uh... It's a beautiful day, and this is a beautiful car. Look at this. Look at the wood on the dashboard. Look at these seats. I mean, there's something, these cars, in fact, the SL2 had the perfect balance of luxury, comfort, and sport. And that's why they're so desirable. Yeah, you see a lot of ladies driving, older ladies drive them, men drive them, everybody drives them. I mean, you will see these in Florida or even where I live. A lot of people daily drive these still. Mercedes are extremely comfortable cars. If you want to see some amazing Mercedes vehicles, watch my museum, factory museum tour in Stuttgart, Germany, along with my Porsche factory tour. I walk you through and show you every car in the Mercedes Museum, Porsche Museum, Ferrari Museum, Pagani Museum, Lamborghini Museum. You can also watch my tour with Valentino Balboni at the Lamborghini Museum back in the day. Um, but I've really enjoyed bringing you this ideal classics car museum. You can buy some of these cars, so check them out online, and also watch my Cars and Coffee here, watch my London Cars and Coffee. How to import a car from Europe. You can see what I bought in Europe. I just brought one back, and uh, I did a full driving review of that, plus it's the star of my how to import a car from Europe video. I have two more cars coming from Europe and uh, one of those I drove on the Nürburgring. So you can see two laps that I did on the Nürburgring. My first lap and my second that I did with the top down. There's a hint, it was convertible. I'm buying cars that you can't get in America. Um, and that's, that's what I wanna do. I like to drive something that nobody else has like my Citroen CX wagon. My Barbie dream wagon, I call it. And uh, I have a Lancia Delta Integrale. Five Porsches in my collection. You want to know what I drive? Search what does Drive and Ivan drive. And again, just search any car and Drive and Ivan. Subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Drive and Ivan.